Welcome to Simple Pong in Python 3 for Beginners, Part 6. Uh, in Part 6, we're going to learn how to get some scoring working. So here's what we have so far. We've actually got a functioning Pong game. Uh, the paddle on the right is moving using the up and down arrows. The paddle on the left is moving using W and S. The ball's bouncing. It's doing everything it needs to do. Next, we want to add a scoring system. So let's uh, go ahead and take a look at that. Um, so basically what we want to do is we want to draw the score on the screen. And here's how we're going to do that uh, in Python using the turtle module. Um, so what we got to do is we actually got to create a pen. Okay, I just call it a pen, but it's actually just a turtle, uh, just like the ball, like the paddle. But the, the turtle module gives these uh, turtles uh, objects a lot of different abilities. So I'm going to make a pen, and it, like the other, is a turtle dot turtle. Again, I always spell that wrong. And keep an eye on the capitalization, so small t for the module name, capital T for the, the class name, which we it's happening in the background. Uh, same thing as before, so pen.speed. And again, this is the animation speed, not the movement speed. It's not really going to move, but uh, we're going to give it a color, pen.color. The shape doesn't matter because we're not going to see it. Uh, if we want to print in white on the screen, like classic uh, Pong style. And pen.pen up. This is because we don't want to draw a line when the pen moves. Um, every turtle actually starts out at the dead center of the screen, then we move it somewhere. Um, if we don't do pen up, you'll see a line moving uh, between those two points. And then here we want to hide the turtle, because we don't need to see it. Uh, now with the ball and the paddle, paddles, uh, we didn't hide it because we want to see those on the screen. But with the pen, we don't want to see. We just want to see the text that it's going to write. So pen.go to and 0, comma, I think 260. And again, I played around with the numbers. That's why I know 260 is, is the number I want. Um, if you remember, again, the screen height is 600. So that means it's 0 to 300 here. So we want the score to be right around this part of the screen. And then it gets pretty easy at this point is we use the write method. So we want to write. And I'm going to write player A. And now when the game starts, the score, of course, is 0 two spaces, player B, zero, comma, and then you want to align equals center, because that will center the text for us around that point. And then we want to choose a font. Okay, now watch here. I've got an extra set of parentheses here. Okay, don't forget that. And I want the font courier, because that's kind of old school techie. Uh, I'll choose a font size of 24 and normal. I think normal, I think you can choose bold and italics, I'm not 100% sure on that one. Okay. So be very careful again, we've got a set of parentheses here, and we've got an extra set of parentheses here for the font, So because there's three uh, arguments we got to send there. Okay, so, again, now, test your code. <laughs> Make sure this is working. So I'm going to run that. Okay, so that's what we wanted. You see I forgot the little space after player B. Okay, but yeah, that's, that's basically what we wanted. Okay, so that's how we get the, the default score on the screen. So what we got to do is we need to keep track of the score. And so what I'm going to do, and I'm going to put this up here, and score. So I need to create a couple variables. I'm just going to call it score A, and when we start the game it's always zero, and score B is going to be zero. Now, down down here, okay, so we get a score when the ball goes off the screen. So here's the right side. So if the ball goes off the right side, think to yourself, who gets a score? Of course, that is going to be player A. So what I can do is score A plus equals 1. That adds 1 to player A's score. And by the same token, on the, on the other side, if the ball goes off the left side of the screen, player B gets that. Okay, so let's run that. Oops. Okay, so nothing, we don't see any change. Can you guess why? Okay. Now, if you said, well, we didn't update uh, the score on the screen, you'd be 100% correct. Okay, so what I'm just going to do is I'm going to copy this. 
line here. And I'm going to put that into here. And you'll see what I got to do is instead of the zeros, and this is just print, you know, basic printing, you know, 101. So if you're not sure how to do that, um, I do have a video on that somewhere. I'll try to remember to link that below about how printing works. So we use the format method on our string, and we want score A and score B. Okay, so what that does is it puts score A here and score B there. So I'm going to, again, make sure I'm using spaces. I'm going to copy that, because I'm pretty sure this is correct. Um, so basically, every time I update the score, I need to update the actual printed score on the screen, or the shown displayed score, I should say. So I'm going to run that. Now watch what happens here. Okay, so you can see it did update. Okay. But clearly something is wrong. Okay, because basically what it's doing is it's just printing on top of itself. Okay, so what we have to do is before we do the call the write method, we say pen.clear. And that will actually clear what's on the screen. Okay, now it happens so fast that you don't see it, um, but it, it actually, it does. So take my word for that one. And again, if you're using Pygame or some other you know, framework or, or method, um, you might not have to do this type of steps, but for the turtle module, this is what you need to do. Okay, so I'm gonna run that. And let's watch what happens. Okay, so player A just got a point. Player B just got a point, and so on and so forth. Okay, so, yeah, so basically we've got a, a pretty well working game here. Again, the game never ends. You just go until, you know, until you give up and get bored, uh, which is pretty easy with Pong. Um, so. Uh, I've got yeah I've got another tutorial coming up on this in this series. I'm going to show you how to add a little bit of sound, uh, which is interesting, uh, especially depending on the operating system that you are using. So let me uh, stop this, and I'll see you hopefully in part seven.